Boat owners these days are really looking for a boat that's easy to use, easy to understand, and easy to maintain. And the Axapar excels in these categories. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna be going to all the detailed spaces on board the Axapar 29 to show you just how easy the boat is to use, understand, and maintain. Let's go have a look. And what we'll do for this video as well is we'll create chapters. So if you want to accelerate to a certain stage in the boat, you can do so in the chapters. But where we're going to start is with the anchor locker. Accessing the anchor locker is nice and easy right through here. And the anchor locker is awesome. So what Axapar has done, because they have a little bit more beam here forward on the boat, uh, they've created much more volume where you can even store dock lines forward here. So you can have a couple of fenders aft and a couple of fenders stored forward here just to keep it simple and give you variety on places to store things. Anchoring can be an intimidating thing for some folks and what Axapar has done it, with the electric anchor windlass, they, it comes with 100 feet of all chain anchor road. Um, the anchor roller on this boat is a great anchor roller. It helps when you bring the anchor up it helps to self-guide the anchor into its sleeve. We'll show you a little B-roll for what that looks like now. Uh, but this is a great anchoring setup. You have a wired remote here, which controls this anchor windlass. Of course, uh, this anchor windlass is powered by the windlass slash bow thruster battery, which there's a switch at the, at the helm. We'll show you that in a second. Um, so you just need to make sure that that battery is on in order to operate this but you have this preventer right here that you remove and then you have this uh, vibration plate here which you also need to remove and get out of the way to deploy the anchor and with those two steps including turning the bow thruster slash windlass battery on you're, we're now able to lower this and i'll just show you real quick how easy it is there's an up down you just press down you've got complete control of the anchor windlass here. So it's a really nice, simple setup. When you are anchoring, you just need to make sure that you don't have any other kids' hands or anything in this area, because this anchor windlass is quite powerful. So you wanna be cognizant of that. There is also an additional wireless uh, controller as well, so you can raise and lower the anchor from the helm if you wish. If you wanna learn more and see uh, the anchoring in action, I'll put a link in the video for our anchoring video on an Axopar, but in general, anchoring an Axopar is super simple and easy. Moving one step aft here, there is a simple machinery space here, which is just incorporates some electrical components. And notice how there's a little detail right here, just a little notch out for the cord. So when you are plugged in, you can shut this hatch nice and easily. Um, but forward here, you've got a, a manual bilge pump and then the handle associated with the bilge pump. And then you have your electrical breakers here. This is all associated with um, the uh, 110, the shore power outlets. To open that, you can just see there's these two clips right on the side to open up this door. And everything is presented to you nice and clearly on this panel. So you have your main breaker, and with this green light here, that's telling me that we do have power coming into the panel. And then we have your battery chargers and outlets on. Uh, I know with these flicked up like this, our battery charger is in fact on, and I'll show you exactly where the battery charger is located on the boat later on in this video. And then lastly, in this space, you'll notice how there's also your water uh, fill here. I really like these fittings because they don't require any tools. You can just lift this up just like this and spin it to fill up your water tank. Um, and again, I'll show you where that water tank is located in a minute, uh, but this is where you fill up the water. Next aft in this compartment here, what you have primarily is just general storage. We've got the window covers in here, and then you'll notice how neatly Axapar allows you to store the two table legs that go in these three different spots here. So you've got tall and short legs. Uh, the tall ones are for uh, table height, and then the short ones are if you wanna create a lounging space up in this area. Next aft is access to the multi-storage compartment, which is where our head is located, and it's where some of the componentry is hidden as well. So let's go on and have a deep dive look into this space. 
down in the multi storage compartment, I've removed all the cushions and whatnot in this space just so we can easily get to everything. For the head, all you need to do is just lift this up right here. This is a Jabsco electric head. For us, we have this electric freshwater head standard on all of our build sheets just because um, we feel like it's the right, right component for the boat. And the Jabsco head is really easy to understand. On the side here, you've got these buttons and the buttons have very clear labels on them to sh kind of show you what the buttons do. This top button is just a momentary switch, which is adding water into the bowl and emptying the bowl. And then the rocker switch is down below. You can either choose to add water to the bowl or just empty the bowl. So it's really quite easy to understand and use. And Jabsco is a great product for here in the US. Parts are easy to get and all that sort of stuff. So this is a great setup here. A question that we often get is, okay, how big is the holding tank? How do you empty the holding tank? How does that whole thing work, right? So I'll show you in a minute where the holding tank is located just forward in the boat here. There's two different ways where you, how you can empty this tank. First is the most common, which is the pump out. And how you pump out the boat is when you're on a dock with a pump out station, uh, you go to the deck fitting, you untwist the deck fitting, and then the folks at the dock can pump you out. Uh, another common way to do it is when you are offshore, you have to be at least three knock miles offshore or greater. Then you can do what's called the overboard discharge. And how you do the overboard discharge on the 29 is actually quite simple. So underneath my feet here, there is a panel that you lift up right here and voila you get immediate access. This is the direct overboard discharge hose. And in general, when looking at hoses on board the boat, whenever you see a uh, this white uh, off-white hose here, that means that you're looking at the sanitary system hoses. And so right now you can see how this valve is closed. Um, if you're gonna do an overboard discharge, first need to make sure that your valve is open, just like this. With that valve open, you can come over here and very simply, you've got a macerator switch right here, and you just gotta press and hold this button down uh, to empty the tank. And when you're pressing this and holding the button down, you're just kind of hearing for the macerator pump for the RPMs to, come, to sort of jump up, and then you'll hear some bubbling underneath the bottom of the boat. That tells you that the tank is empty. So it's just that simple. And since we're down in this area, this AirMar is your depth transducer. So this is the element that is telling you how much water you have below the boat and you know this is a really quality fitting you can see um, how solid that installation is so really nice componentry from uh, Axopar. And then aft of the depth transducer you've got your forward bilge pump right there. Next thing I want to show you down here is the sink. You have the sink that just pops down right here. This is a direct overboard drain so it just goes right overboard nice and simple nothing really to uh, take care of here. You've got just your freshwater pressure um, outlet right here. So nice and easy solution. And over to port here, you, you've got your fuses and a couple of switches here. These switches here are for your freshwater pump. Uh, depending on how many refrigerators you have, your switches to turn on off your refrigerators right here. The only other switch is what we mentioned is your macerator switch. But ever had a component that's not working, you come down here and you see if the fuse has been popped. Also, getting behind this panel is really easy too. You can pop down here and have service guys get easily access to this, the back end of these panels. So again, easy to maintain, easy to get to stuff, really cool. Same thing with over here. Just, uh, this is some of your NEMA networks, some of your electronics, JL Audio stuff. All right, now focusing more forward in this multi-storage area, I wanna show you where some of these systems are on board the boat. And you just flip this forward, and with the cushions removed, you just pop these panels out. It's really simple to get to here. One, two, look how sweet that is. All right, so now, boom, I have access to all of the forward components on board. So first thing right here is your, I mentioned earlier that there is a specific battery for the anchor windlass in the bow thruster. That's what this battery is here. This tank is your 11 gallon holding tank for a waste tank. You can notice that how you have the hoses here. So this hose is for the vent. This hose here is for your overboard 
discharge. And then this hose here is for your pump out. And then for your fresh water tank here, you have your, your fill line right here. This hose, clear hose that you have here, that is for the, the vent for the hose. Um, just so as you're filling it, the air can exit out of, uh, out of this hose right here. And then this hose is your supply hose. So this is where the water comes out of the tank and then into your pump. And your pump is located just right here. Um, very easy to get to. This uh, yellow pump right here is your macerator pump. And this is the switch that you're turning on. You're turning on this pump right here. And that is what is uh, allowing the black water to exit out of the tank through the, the throw hole. And then uh, this guy right here, this is your uh, window wash fluid right there. That's how you fill that up. And then all the way forward, of course, is your electric bow thruster. So these are all the componentry uh, systems to pay attention to while you're uh, up here in the bow of the boat. And all is very easy to get to. Other things that you have down here is you have the two uh, overhead lights. You have overhead lights and then ambient lights, which makes this space nice and bright at night. You have a USB charger outlet right here. For ventilation, you've got uh, the diesel heater. Um, you can put this on fan only mode to push fresh air into here. And you also have some natural ventilation from these here. You could also do fresh air or heat air, depending on if you have the diesel heater or not. And then off to starboard here, you've got a 110 outlet uh, for when you're plugged into shore power. Uh, this outlet will work as well. So that's pretty much all that's going on down here. Now let's go to the pot house and take a look at that. Before we head off, one thing I wanted to mention is that if you're interested in learning more details on the 29 Axapar, you can head to our website, spec out a boat, and we can let you know what the boat's gonna cost. We'd love to help you out getting into a 29 Axapar. Then walking aft into the pilot house, you have your fuel fill right here. It's nice having the fuel fill right here because when you're coming up on the starboard side of the dock to fill up your boat, your fuel fill is right here, and then you have all your navigation, your fuel levels right here, so you can just easily see what's going on all in one place. So I love that location that they put the fuel fill on. In the pilot house, the helm is super ergonomic for the helmsman and also for the crew as well to easily get around. And that's been a huge change for the 29 that's been super well received. But uh, as far as componentry and everything is concerned. You still have familiar switches at the dash here. These switches here are super easy to understand. You've got your forward and aft bilge pump, your horn, nav light, anchor light, deck lights, all the variety of different uh, lighting uh, packages here. Your spotlights for uh, up on the mast, underwater lights, and your auxiliary switch here as well. So all right close to the helmsman. So the ergonomics are fantastic for a helmsman. Export even incorporated these cubby holes right here as well. Um, so just makes it easy to store stuff and keep this dash uncluttered. So really appreciate that. Another thing with the diesel heater that you have is you've got these two vents here they can, you can kind of point at the windshield to help prevent from fogging and whatnot. Uh, your switch for your electric uh, roof is just right here. But one thing that I also really like is you've got all your uh, battery switches right here. And when I turn on and off these switches here, these switches automatically rotate the fixed battery switches. So we'll show you in the B-roll what that looks like when you turn on the switch. But you just go boom, 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 turn on these switches, everything goes live, trim the engines down, turn, fire up the engines, hop off the dock. So they're nice and conveniently located just because you're gonna be turning on and off those switch, switches every time you use the boat. And then moving from the helm aft here, as I sh get to the aft machinery spaces on the boat, you do have a 12 volt charger outlet, USB charger outlet here. Another thing I really like is they've got this little hideaway storage area in here, which is neatly tucked away. There's even the 110 outlet in here as well, which is pretty sweet. Of course, getting access to this aft space on the boat is super easy. If you just lift this up here, lift this up here, you know, it doesn't take any effort at all to get access down here. Um, so they just dyed all these ergonomics in really nicely.
So back here in the aft cabin, I've removed the cushions so we can get to the componentry of this space here. What Axbar has done and the accessibility that they've created back here is awesome. My, my service guys love this. So getting back here, what you do is you can just undo these latches real quick. And then this just hinges up and then you can boop, pop this sucker out. And then we'll do the same thing on the port side. Just so you can see, you know, rarely are you getting back in here for any reason, but um, winter storage or general servicing and whatnot, you know, you'll get back here rarely, but it's nice that when you need to, it's easy to do it. Because this is a twin engine boat, there is an, an additional battery than there would be, otherwise would be for a single engine boat. So you've got four batteries back here. And then remember, you also have the battery forward here. So in total on board the boat, you have between four and five batteries, depending on how many engines you have. What Xpar has done is made it super easy to get back here to the battery. So if you're in winter storage mode, best way to store these batteries when you're storing the boat for the winter time is you pop the batteries out and you put them in a heated space for on a trickle charger. That's the best thing for the batteries. So that just makes it easy to do it back here, particularly since this area is all opened up and you can just drop them in from above. So really sweet accessibility back here. With the service battery bank, it's now two batteries. So you have two 100 amp hour, 200 amps in total uh, service batteries as well. That just doubles the amount of stored energy that you had on the 28, which is pretty sweet. You also have here, this is your steering pump for the Mercury outboards. You have your battery charger right back here. And then you've got your uh, battery switches. These are the physical switches that um, rotate when you turn on the remote switches. So this is where you can manually turn them on, which you don't really need to uh, do it because you've got the remote switches at the helm. Accessibility back here is fantastic. For the staff panel right back here, that is where you can get access to the aft bilge pump if you need to. In general, accessibility and extra battery storage above and beyond what the 28 had, I think is gonna be well received for our customers. And then before we come out of this space here, um, I'll just show you there's this extra storage that you've gained underneath here. What a great spot for um, some life jackets right there or anything else you want. Um, and then you also have these little cubbies on either side here just to store some extra bits and bobs. Lights back here as well, nice and easy to access, so pretty sweet space. Then finally, aft in the line locker here, really great deep line locker, great storage back here. But you also have the fill, when you get the diesel heater, you've got the diesel fill, and then you have an additional manual bilge pump for the aft bilge. And on the port side here, you've got your shower, in addition to all that great storage, similar to you had on the starboard side. I hope you found this video educational on the 29 Axapar. If you have any questions for us, please do feel free to reach out to us. We'll be doing many more of these types of videos. So if you have a suggestion for us, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.